part 7 of Blender 2.6, The Basics. In this video, we're going to be talking about two things. In the first part, we're going to be talking about how to model two halves of a character at the same time. And in the second part of this video, we're going to be talking about how to make your models look a whole lot better in one easy step. Before we get there though, I have to mention that in this video, I'll be using a new version of Blender as of July 18th, 2013. Blender 2.68 came out. In the previous six videos, I was using Blender 2.67B, I believe it was. And with every new version of Blender, I would, and they come out pretty much every two months or so, uh, you get a new splash screen, so a new picture, uh, some bug fixes, and some new features. Although none of those new features will probably show up in this tutorial series aimed at the basics of Blender. So to get started, I'll talk about the last video. In the last video, we made a simple character using a process called box modeling, which basically means you take a box or a cube in Blender and you model it into any object that you like. In the last video, we made a person. And so in this video, I'll talk about how to make, uh, or in the first part of this video, I'll talk about how to make uh, both halves of the character at the same time. I'll start off though by pressing tab to go into edit mode with my default cube selected. And we're gonna make that basic, basic head, which basically means just a rounded uh, cube. So I'm gonna subdivide up um, the head. Now, if you didn't watch the last video and you don't know what's going on, go ahead. I'll put the link to that video on the screen right now so you can go ahead and watch it and come back to this one. I'm gonna make the cube round, of course, by going and selecting the middle face on all six sides. Yeah, there we go, I think and I'll scale them outwards. Now, of course, it's always better to be in, a, in an orthographic uh, straight on view for the most part, especially if you're a beginner in using 3D or a beginner in Blender at least. And I'm gonna scale in all these, oops, all these corners to make my sphere. And that's gonna be the start of my head. This is at the point where we would want to cut the head in half, so we only have half of the head. And then we're gonna use what's called a modifier, which you could compare to like a filter in Photoshop or GIMP that kind of puts a procedural change onto a mesh. So it makes a mesh have one big change to it in some way, uh, and that's basically what a modifier is. Before we can do that though, um, I'm going to go to my front view and we have to cut the character in half and I'll do that by using the loop cut tool with control R and then I'll put my mouse over one of these side to side edges and click and then we want the cut to go right exactly in the middle so I'll right click uh, to put that, uh, that seam right in the middle and now we're in vertex mode still I'll press A to deselect all and to select this half of the head which we're going to delete, we're going to delete his half uh, his uh, right half of his head, which is the left hand side facing him. Uh, we're going to use the box select tool, which is the B key, uh, and that brings up these dashed lines that follow your mouse around, and that also means that you can click and drag a selection around any of the vertexes that you want. Now there's a problem here though, and that is that whenever you're looking at a mesh and you want to select anything like we just did, you're only going to be selecting the vertices or faces or edges that you can actually see at that time. So from this view, from the front view, we can only see the uh, these vertexes and not the ones in the back. To solve that, we actually have to click this little button down here, which is called the Limit Selection to Visible button. What that means is that we can only select things that we can actually see at any one time. And when this button is dark, it means it's turned on, and that means we can only see or select what we can see. But clicking it to make it light actually makes the mesh kind of see-through. And so when I orbit, you'll actually be able to tell now that I can see the, the back faces of the mesh. And that means I can also select the vertexes uh, or vertices in the back as well. Same thing goes for faces. Now I can select faces in the background. Normally this is kind of a, a something that's more advanced or more frustrating because you can select things you don't mean to. If I want to select this face in the front and I click on it, I might accidentally select the face in the back and that can be a world of trouble if you don't know what you're doing. But um, in this case, I'm going to press A to deselect all uh, in vertex select mode and then I'll go to my front view, box select all these vertexes, not including the, uh, the line where we're going to mirror around and I'll press X to delete. And the kind of rule of thumb with this is that when you have vertices selected, you delete vertices. So I'm going to click on vertices, and now we're just left with half of the head, including this middle line. Um, one more thing to note is that in the middle of every mesh, when you create a mesh, in this case it was a default cube, so it was already here, 
uh, you have this orange dot and this orange dot is called the origin of the mesh which um, basically signifies where the coordinates of the mesh is and you can do some other funny things with it as well but which are more advanced but uh, basically the rule of thumb when you're using the mirror tool or the mirror modifier is that this orange dot needs to be in line exactly with where you want to mirror if I were to select all the um, vertices in the mesh in edit mode and grab all them and move them all at once in edit mode the orange dot the origin still stays where it is this would not make a good mirror because the mirror would happen right here and there would be a big gap you can imagine the other half being over here so it's best to use a fresh brand new object in this case we started a new file um, so I didn't move or play with the mesh at all before I added the mirror uh, except for doing very symmetrical things like making the uh, cube into a sphere like shape so to add this mirror modifier I'm gonna make my uh, properties window on the side a little bit wider modifiers are over under this wrench tab I don't know why it's a wrench uh, it just is and you'll see this window is very plain or the tab under the window is very plain and um, to add the mirror modifier you simply click on add modifier and select the mirror modifier which is this one right here and when you add it two things will happen so I'm gonna click on it one thing that happened was we got the second half of the head back and the next thing that happened was that we had this uh, section added to this window which are the mirror modifier options and just like in Photoshop or GIMP and filters if you click on the eye it hides the effect and when you click it again the effect comes back. Um, the cool thing about this mirror modifier is that whenever I change anything on the existing side or the real side it'll affect exactly mirrored what's on the virtual side. So I'm going to go and press tab to get into edit mode and I'll press uh, A to deselect all. You can see that I can only select the vertices that are real. This virtual side's there but I can't select anything in there. Um, but if I select anything and move it on the existing side or the real side, it changes what's on the virtual side as well. That's great. I can do more things though. I can also like take a face and scale it. And as you can see, it changes the other side. If I, um, let's try subdividing. I'm going to select this one face. Normally you don't want to subdivide just one face, but in this case I will. Um, and so now this face has two cuts through it. Um, and I'll grab just this one face. You can see that the changes, even though I added more geometry to this side, uh, it's still reflected over here. So really it's just a mirror um, that flips. Now there's one thing you're going to want to do before you do anything after you add the mirror modifier. So right when you add the mirror modifier, you want to check this clipping checkbox. And what that means is that, well, I'm going to go back into vertex select mode and select one of the vertices in the middle or against the mirror. Now when you do not have this checked and it isn't by default, I can move vertices away from the mirror and make a hole in my mesh, which is generally bad. Uh, I can also drag vertices across the mirror and you can see it still mirrors and it creates really kind of horrible looking things. So I'm gonna undo that with Control Z and Control Z. Um, if I have clipping turned on, what that does is it kind of glues any vertices that you allow to touch the mirror, it glues them to the mirror. So now I can no longer move with clipping selected vertices away from or across the, uh, the mirror. I can still move them up and down and front and back, but along the mirror uh, things are glued. And that's normally a good thing, although if you accidentally grab like a vertice that is not supposed to be against the mirror, and you drag it into the mirror, you'll find that it's kind of glued there and you can't drag it back unless you uncheck clipping, move it back, and then check clipping again. So that's how you solve that problem should you ever run into it. Um, generally, if you don't have this selected, what you'll end up happening uh, just because of the way um, this modifier works is that uh, you'll get like little tiny little gaps and you won't be able to tell um, if you do ever have little gaps and you have the problem where I don't, you don't want to have to check every single one, you can up this merge limit and that will kind of glue any little holes that you have by accident or I believe any little overlaps you have will get fixed. Um, I don't know if that's the case actually, I haven't experimented with that for a while, but uh, it's better to have clipping uh, right from the get-go. So that is the mirror modifier. The last thing I have to say about this is that 
actually there's two more things. Um, things can kind of scale f in strange ways. I'm not sure, actually sure what happened with this. I'm going to get rid of it and uh, add it again. So just like with any modifier, you can get rid of it. Uh, so you can take it away. Even if you save and close the file and you come back to it later, you can always get rid of a modifier. Um, and if you want to make a modifier permanent, you can press apply. We'll talk about that in a minute though. Um, scaling is funny around the, the mirror. And so let me show you what this means. I'm going to make a loop cut around the side of the head. So kind of around his like ear and down through his neck. And in the last video, what I did to make the neck is I made these bottom four, I'm going to turn this uh, back facing things off so I can see things more easily. These bottom four, uh, really only two that I can really select now, uh, would, uh, these four faces would form the base of the neck where I would extrude down from, but I made it round ahead of time, I think at least. And what I would have done is I would have selected the four corner vertices, so these two and then the vertices on the, the opposite side. And then I would have pressed S to scale down. And what that would have done is it would have scaled all these four vertexes uh, inwards towards the middle of the four of the things that were selected. So they would have gone and made a circle. They would have all gone inwards diagonally. But when I press S now, all they do is they go in towards each other and not in towards the mirror at all. So if I keep on scaling, you'll see that they just go towards each other and not forming a very good circle. Oops. Uh, and uh, so what I have to do is kind of scale down to about where I think I want it to go and then move things in more towards the mirror. If you do any scaling around the mirror, uh, especially when you're making like that mouth that, that I extruded inwards, you're going to find some funny things in terms of how things scale around the mirror. And that's just something they're going to have to live with. Um, the next thing is, and from this point on, I could extrude down the neck. Now if I did not have clipping turned on, which I don't, for some reason I forgot to turn it back on, uh, if I extrude downwards and I, don't, and I do not have clipping turned on, what happens is, and I'll turn this back on, I get internal geometry. I get two faces that run up through the middle of my neck. And this is a bad thing. I do not want faces right there. Those two are bad. So what I want to do when I, before I extrude around the mirror uh, is I have to have clipping checked. And now so when I press E to extrude, I don't have those anymore, which is a good thing. And well, the last thing is, if I can remember it, ooh, no, I think that was it, uh, to apply these changes. Let's say I make my entire person, I spend time um, making those nice um, eye socket shapes by extruding and then scaling and moving them inwards and inwards and inwards, um, and I make my character and it's all great. And then I want to add bones, and we'll talk about bones in a future uh, episode of this series. Um, you want to press apply, and that will make the both halves of the mesh real, and they'll be connected. So right now I can only edit one half of the mesh, uh, but if I press apply, the mirror modifier will disappear, and there'll be two real halves that are connected inside the same mesh. So I did that, I pressed apply, go back into edit mode, and now I can, let's say, oops, I've got this thing turned back on still. Um, now I can make subtle changes. So if I want to make my character have like a scar around his eye on one side but not the other, or I want to give him a snarl or something like that on, on his mouth, or make any little subtle changes to make him asymmetrical, I can do that at this point, and then I can go ahead and add bones. So that's how you use the mirror modifier. Um, the second part of this video is how to use the subsurf modifier to make your characters look smoother. It's called the subdivision surface modifier, and it makes your meshes smooth. Uh, but the easier way to make things smooth is just to have your mesh selected, and on your tool shelf, there's two options for shading, flat and smooth. By default, everything is flat, so if I press smooth, you'll see that what it does is it kind of makes my mesh look smooth, basically just by blending together the shading or the the lightness and darkness of all of the faces so you don't get that harsh line between every single face or polygon. This works well for really round shapes and kind of cartoony shapes, but you'll notice that when you get an edge, so on the bottom of his neck, you really this really shouldn't be smooth between these uh, side faces. Uh, those should not be smoothed with the bottom faces. They should be smoothed like the sides of a soup camp. Um, are all smooth, but they're not smoothed over this edge. So 
this the edge of these four faces around their exterior really should not be smoothed with all the sides of the cam and unfortunately because of that um, smoothing with any kind of an object that has an edge to it is not a good idea uh, you can smooth by uh, selecting faces and while they're flat shaded and then you can actually press where is it there we go down here smooth and then they will be blended together. So I could select all the faces on this except for these four and go smooth and that would work a little bit better and then I could select these ones if I wanted to blend them together and go smooth. That works a little bit better but uh, generally for rounded objects. The other way to make things smooth and this is going to be uh, or give your objects a dramatically better look is the subdivision surface or subsurf modifier which you can add right by clicking on this right here. And just like with any modifier, it adds a section uh, under your wrenched tab. And what this does is it really smooths out your object by actually adding more geometry. Now be careful with this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my mesh flat again so you can see. Um, that's the original, okay? And that's the result. So I'm gonna just kind of toggle between these two and you can see the effect. Basically, it's taking every face and cutting it uh, in two, or with two cuts or more, um, and basically really rounding out all those points. Um, now, this does shrink your mesh a little bit. You'll see the edges kind of contract inwards, but this is how you can make a low poly, low polygon, low resolution mesh look really much, much better. And combined with smooth, it really looks good. Now you can kind of up the number of cuts or the number of uh, iterations of smoothness by turning up these two numbers. They, one of them affects how it looks in your viewport. This view one only changes it in this window and render is for your final movie. I would never change any of these above, let's say three. Two is not a bad number. Um, one is pretty low, but uh, three is getting really high. If you go really high, you could actually crash your computer. So make sure you save your file before you try playing with this at all. Um, and when you have the subsurf modifier applied and you go back into edit mode, you can still edit the original mesh because again, this is like a filter in Photoshop or GIMP where it's non-destructive uh, until you press apply. Now, that being said, I can still edit the original mesh. If I select one of these faces and I extrude out, you're going to see that it kind of makes it smooth in funny ways sometimes. And the closer together different edges are, so I'm going to extrude that just a little bit. In fact, I'm not going to extrude it at all. I right clicked to put it back in the same spot. So I pressed E and then right clicked. You're going to see a funny shape there. And that's because I actually have two polygons or edges that are right next to each other. So it's actually two edges right there, two there, two there, and two there. And what that's doing is it's forcing a hard edge. If I kept going, if I extruded this one out, actually I'll show you what that looks like. I can grab this and you'll see that there are extra faces hidden in there. But if I extrude it now, I kind of have a hard edge there. So the closer edges are together, the harder your edge. Uh, that could be like a, a horn or something like that. Um, let's undo that and undo that a few more times to get rid of that. Um, to make any modifier permanent, I of course press apply, but I highly suggest you don't ever press apply with the subsurf modifier because right now I have a mesh that I can work with. It's not too dense in terms of how many faces there are, but if I press apply, now I have a ton of faces that makes it pretty much impossible to work with. So in this video, we covered the mirror modifier and the subdivision service modifier. Uh, that's it for this video. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.